You're listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson, the podcast that tells you what it really takes to build a business and the simple steps to get you there. I'm determined to share with you the reality of easy, simple business marketing tips to make passive income so that you can start making money online. Making Money Online is sponsored by Nicola J. Rowley PR, helping entrepreneurs and brands get visible through strategic storytelling. If you're serious about being seen and impacting the lives of others, harnessing the power of PR is the best way to grow and scale your business. Visit njrpr.com for more details and read Nicola's best-selling book, The Power of PR. Hi, guys, and welcome to this week's podcast. This week, I have a guest with me who you're going to love. Some of you might already know her. So I have with me Nicola J. Rowley, and she helps entrepreneurs and brands in the entertainment and leisure industry to get visible through strategic storytelling. And what this basically means is she's really good at getting people PR. (laughs) So welcome to the show, Nicola. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. No worries. Let's talk about why you do this in the first place. Like one of the things that I'm really proud of on this podcast is it's about storytelling. The whole thing, the whole podcast is people telling their own stories. And people often say to me, but I just want to talk about my business. And I say, people aren't interested in your business. They're interested in you as a person and the story and what led you to that business. And that's what people want to hear because that's what's relatable. And that's basically what you teach people to do, isn't it? So let's start with your own story. Why did you get into this in the first place? Well, rewind all the way back to when I was six. And um, I sat down and the teacher said to me, go uh, write a story. And I started writing the story. It was about a cat, a witch and a spaceship. And something happened in that moment. I mean, I still remember exactly how I felt in that moment while I was writing that story. Number one, I didn't want to stop. Number two, I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. You can come up with all kinds of things. I always had an active imagination. And what it showed me at the end of it, it was more than a thousand words long. And when you're six, that's a lot of words. That's a lot. Yeah. And the teacher said to me, oh, my gosh, Nicola. OK, will you stand up in front of the whole school and read your story? And I was like, OK. And I found the second thing that I loved as a result of that which was presenting. So it made sense that because I love telling stories and presenting that I would become a journalist. So went in, became a journalist, and I fell in love with broadcasting when I was at university. So I went off, became a newsreader and reporter, worked at local radio stations, eventually worked my way up, was reading the news on Radio 1 for Chris Moyles and at weekends and things like that, really enjoying it. But I always wanted to work in TV. So I went across the TV. I was working for what was then the BBC News 24. It's now the BBC News Channel. And then eventually I was the entertainment reporter for BBC Three. And it was great, but I just couldn't see me standing on a red carpet when I was 50 interviewing Simon (laughs) Cowell. I just couldn't see it happening. And I was just like, if we ever moved out of London or we moved away, it was quite limited at the time in terms of what I could do. And I was looking for something a bit more creative. So I moved across into PR and even like the job application itself was amazing. I like loved everything about it. I put together this great big film and I did a big presentation. And I think they sat there at the first time and they were just like, it's like Elle who Woods. is this person? It's like Elle Woods from Legally Blonde sending in a video. <laughs> it it literally was. It was I, like I did this big presentation. It had video clips and everything. And I stood up and in front of all of the managing partners of the company. And they just sat there with their mouths open. They didn't know what to make of me. Anyway, started there, learned everything there was to learn about PR, because I think you do. If you work in agency, you just, it's a very fast track way to learn everything. And then I moved in house and had lots of various roles that I did. I did loads of traveling. I was looking after a lot of TV shows and it was brilliant. I worked with a lot of celebrities, household names, and it was great. And I absolutely loved it. Um, And my final job was working at Thought Park. And I was the head of PR at Thought Park. Absolutely brilliant fun. That year was amazing. You must have got loads of free roller coaster action doing that. 
I don't go upside down. So <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like all the kind of like the tamer rides, which everyone thought was hilarious. So I was like the head of PR and they were like, but you're putting all of these celebrities on all these massive rides and then you're not doing it yourself. But by know. that point, in between all of this, my son had come along and I'd had to reconfigure the way that I looked at everything, everything up until the point where he arrived. It was literally like, you know, it was all about the career and where yeah. I was going to go next and very exciting experiences. And I remember at the time uh, waving goodbye to my colleagues and saying, oh, yeah, I'll be back in nine months from now and see you then. And we had a tricky start. He basically within a couple of days of being born, he was in NICU. His blood sugar levels crashed dangerously uh, low when he was up in NICU. They were having to evacuate everyone out from NICU while they were doing x-rays and tests and goodness knows what on him. And it was a really difficult time. And I remember waking up two floors down from the intensive care unit in the middle of the night, going to look for him in his crib and the crib next to me was empty. And that was the point that triggered separation anxiety. And it just got worse and worse. And because we live where we do and we don't have family around us, it was very much me and him during the day. Um, my husband was at work. So it was just us. We were in this little tight unit. And everyone thinks of separation anxiety as coming from children, but actually it affects adults a lot. It was really tough. And I think because I hadn't had any counselling about how everything had gone and the, you know even the birth I mean I've got tocophobia which is a fear of childbirth so I had to have a c-section and even going through all of that I had a psychologist helping me through each stage to get there to even bring him into the world so it's a massive thing for me to go through and then to have that start and then for us to be constantly together. I mean, I think the first six weeks of his life, we literally just were glued together. And so you get to, you know, coming back to that nine months, I was not good. And I managed to find a way to be able to make a bit of extra money. And so I could keep going for another three months. And um, when I did go back, I just really struggled. And I was the person that was... Everyone else was like, great, must be brilliant to be back. And, you know, you get a bit more adult time. And all I could think about was, this is not why I became a mum. I'm only seeing him for 30 minutes a day. I can't get my head around why I am commuting and not seeing him at all in the morning. And then I'm only seeing him for 30 minutes I've been at there. night. I know what that feels like. And, it, and it's it, horrible. Yeah, it, it killed me. It literally killed me and it broke my heart. And I then had to find a way somehow to build myself back up and make things work for me. So I think when you and I first met, it was around about this time. And I was, at the time, I, I was running my own business as a photographer yeah. as well. So I was doing that on the sidelines. And I was kind of trying to find an exit that way. So by the time I got to working at Thorpe Park, which was kind of four day week, 30 minutes down the road and I was like I know that this is only going to be for a year because James was going to primary school and he was he was one of the youngest in the year so he was only just of turned four and I wanted to be there for him to be the mum on the school gates doing the drop-offs and the pickup but still you know working at the same time and making it work for me so what I did was I just literally focused so much and I got loads and loads of photography bookings and I got like you know I think I booked in like 25 in one year and so like, then you right, wouldn't have do to this. go back to work so that I didn't go back to work and that I could then do this and I could be able to do it all and I then realized that actually it got to a point where I was like okay I can do some PR as well around this but it was only when you said why are you not doing the PR at the same time because it's what you love and it's what you do that it finally clicked into place so I, mean, I, look, it, I just looked for the easiest route and what I could see from you was someone that was getting a lot of photography clients but that took quite a lot out of you because you were having to go and spend time away from 
your child again and I thought well she has all of this like she was a journalist she worked with PR like why isn't she using this it's crazy so many entrepreneurs need that and and you didn't just know one side like a lot of PR people that I come into contact with they understand how to be a PR agency and how to send things in to journalists but because you'd had the journalist side I thought that was so unique because you knew what people would look at what journalists would look at because I read somewhere now, when you send something into a journalist, they get like a thousand pitches a day and they just block delete them all based on the subject line. And I thought, well, you'd know what you would open and what not. So you can teach other people. Yeah, definitely. And I think also because I understand that everything needs to be wrapped up in a story, which was the whole reason that I wanted to become a journalist in the first place. And then I actually, it finally clicked. It's taken a while. So it finally clicked that actually... I can help other people tell their stories. And by doing that and doing it strategically, that's how you can get the best PR. And now I get journalists coming to me and saying, we need more people like you. Why, why doesn't anyone understand it the way you do? Because you, you present us with stories. You present us with the angles that actually work because you know what it is that we're after and what we're looking yeah. for. And that's important, the angles, because I remember thinking, you know, when when I first started kind of working with people, they were like, I'm trying to get PR. And they would send in a press release about this is my business and this is what I do. And I was thinking, why would anyone care? Like, I wouldn't care. So why would anyone care? What, where's the human interest piece in this? Like, what's the angle? And I think you're really good at finding angles. Like, I don't have much PR about my courses or like what my business does my PR is always about like my anti-bullying campaigning or you know how to to have more freedom in your job and that kind of thing it, is that the human interest story like having twins and traveling the world and all of those things that people care about you know people need stories that are relatable and that's what you do I think you bring out what's relatable from people's heads because people always think well I don't have a story yeah. And the amount of times people come to me and they say, I don't think I've got anything. And then, you get, you know, I'll talk to them. I do these strategy sessions where I sit down and I, I pull out their stories from them. And, you know, there's a classic example. I did this um, with a lady called Aloho and um, we literally went through everything. She's very talented and I she does Aloha. lots of different things. And uh, we got to two minutes before the end of that conversation. I was like, and she went, oh, there's this radio station. I was like, what radio station? And she said, well, I've converted my garage at my home into a radio station. I was like, send me some pictures. Because of course, my background's radio. So I understand what a professional setup looks like. She sends it across. And it's a full-blown recording oh, no. studio, radio studio. And I was like, why is they, Why are you not talking about this? And she, she was like, well, I, no, I've, I've never got any PR. I've really struggled with PR before. And I was like, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do X, Y, Z. And lo and behold, then she ends up with a double page spread in like the Daily Record, which for her, because she's based in Edinburgh, it's a really big deal. And she ends up with like a magazine feature. And she's just like, Nicola, how? And I was like, because it's a story. Yeah, that's what people want. So when we're a journey, because that's yeah. the thing that works really well with you as well, is your journey, like where you've been. You've been from A to where you are now, B. And it's really interesting because everyone's inspired by, hang on a second, how did she manage to do that? I want to be able to do that too. Yeah, it is definitely about that. It's never about this is what I do. <laughs> how interesting. So I think that some people say, yeah, but this is great. I really want to have a story in the newspapers. I'd love to be in, I don't know, Caraccia magazine or Woman's Own or whatever. But how is it going to help my business? Oh, I get this all the time. Or hang on a second. I've been featured. Now what? That happens a lot as well. So there's a number of ways that PR can actually help you. If you, if you look at PR strategically and it does need to be strategically you first of all you've got to think about who is your ideal client where do they hang out so you want to be seen in the places where your ideal clients are hanging out because if people don't know about you or how you can help them how are you going to be able to help them you become a, a well-kept secret so you don't want to be doing that so when you secure any PR what you want to be doing is getting across the messaging of how you can actually help them. But not only does PR help you 
tell them that, but it increases your reach. Your credibility can go through the roof. And I mean, we've seen it this week. You've just ended up with your blue tick yeah. on Instagram, which is, you know, that all is down to PR. going to help you. That is all down to PR, but also that helps, helps you in terms of preventing others from taking, trying to take away your identity and causing problems for your other clients. So there are lots of different things that PR can help you with, but it is a, a really big credibility marker. And when people see those media logos on your website that you've been as featured in, what do you think that does? That makes you stand out head and above anybody else. It really true. does. I think you have to be really careful not to just collect credibility markers for the sake of it. So like, I know that everybody, I got Forbes and everybody's like, oh, I want Forbes, I want Forbes. My client, my ideal client doesn't read Forbes. So like, it's great for a credibility marker, but don't, you know, like discount those newspapers and magazines that your ideal client actually does read. I've got more people that have come to work with me from reading Woman's Own than I have from Forbes. And yet Forbes is like this holy grail. But at the end of the day, I want it to turn into sales. That's what it's about. That's what PR is for for me. Yeah, definitely. And I think it is. It's being seen and being featured and talking about your experience as and when you're going through this. Remember, if you are telling your story and you're sharing that vulnerability, what it allows you to do is have a deeper emotional connection with people and people buy from people but much more than that what I think sometimes people get really scared about PR they get nervous about oh my gosh it's me and I'm putting myself out there and I think what we have to remember is that it's not about us yeah it is very much about other people and the impact that you can have on their lives maybe you can help someone get out of a situation that they're currently facing because they see that it is possible to do so perhaps they've also been in debt perhaps they've come out of a bad relationship because they read something somewhere and they thought okay maybe it is possible for me to and if you think about it along those lines the impact you can have on others it's huge and that for me is where the power of PR really lies and that's why it doesn't matter if it's not about your business like people often say oh yeah but it's not even anything to do with my business it's about this other thing that happened to me so how is it going to help my business it will because if you're relatable and people relate to your story they're going to come and look you up anyway even when I haven't had like my website in there or any a link or anything like that people have found me and put um, I can always tell because on my group we say where did you find me and you know, we'll have woman's own, the male, like they'll all be on there. So I know they've found me from somewhere, even without my link there. And that generally happens because people relate to the story you're telling them. It's not because they care about your business, but then they might go on to buy something from you because of that, because they've got to know you. And you talk about fear of PR. I think there's also a fear of journalists. And, you know, I remember when I first started pitching to get press, I, I kind of thought of these journalists as these like scary people who will judge me or will say, well, this isn't a good enough story or that kind of thing. And then I did your PR six pack, which is basically Nicola does this thing where a few of us, there's like six of us go to like a really nice hotel and chat to six journalists, like one-on-one, -on -one. you get to chat to them and you're having a drink at the same time. It's really informal. And that really helped me not be scared of journalists because what I realized sitting there is they're all just normal people and they have to fill their magazines and they're looking for stories all the time. And, you know, that got me woman's own and it got me talking to people from the Telegraph and we got a, a Telegraph piece. And all it is, is two people at the end of the day talking about their experiences. And I found it really empowering to kind of think these are just normal people that need to do their jobs as much as you need to do your job and it was really good and I think we need to not be scared of putting ourselves forward for things of pitching at the end of the day people can only say no or you those. cannot hear from yeah. which does tend to happen a lot but what I would say is at the end of the day I mean, you can hear me talking now I'm a former journalist and up until 2019, I was writing travel features for The Sun. So I'm like, I'm very approachable. And a lot of the journalists that I work with, they're also very approachable. But you mentioned the PR six pack. The reason that that works is because 
I've sat down with every single person that will be going and sitting in that room with the journalists and we've worked out what their story is and the angles. So they're already have like training beforehand so that they know what to say. Yeah. And it means that the journalists are like sitting there going, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And the feedback from the journalists was literally off the scale. And they're all now like messaging me saying, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Yeah, because they can find their brilliant. people. They can find their stories from it because we were already prepped on what our stories were going to be. And that's all they're looking for. And it's hard for them to get that. So yeah, it's such a good idea. So one of the things that you do now is you kind of do courses to help people get their own PR, which I think is a really good idea because I think more and more at the moment, if a PR puts you forward for something, you're ignored because they're so used to seeing the PR people putting people forward for things. Whereas when you do it yourself, they do notice you. Like people want to hear from people telling their own stories. And what I love is that you teach people how to do that rather than to necessarily always have to use a PR team. And you do that from a course, don't you? Yes, that's right. So there's a PR mastery of the course. And it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great course in terms of it takes you right from the very beginning understanding about your ideal client, the importance of working out which media they're actually reading, consuming, watching, listening to, so that you know where you need to be targeting your messaging, you know what you need to be saying to them. And then we build up everything. So week by week by week, it's building on your confidence so that you do feel happy to be able to then start putting yourself forward. But then as part of that course, you also get access to the PR Mastery membership, which is my results proven membership I'm in where, <laughs> where um, people come in basically and um, we post out real time media opportunities and the contact details for the journalists so that people can actually go off and secure the media. And the results are just, they're off the scale. They're you so know? good. That's where I've got a lot of mine like from in there and you know it's really good to have consistent PR the thing that got me the blue tick was consistent PR not just like oh I've got a piece here so now I can ignore it for six months like it has to be consistent it's like a snowball effect um, and ha- being in a membership really helps that because there's always things get- popping in there and I think oh I can go for that one I can go for that one it's been great to talk about this I think it I think PR is really important I think a lot of people don't go for it early enough because they think I don't have enough of a story yet and that kind of thing. And and it's generally wrong. It's generally that they do already have a story because humans are interested in humans and everyone has something to say. So I'd love to see more people put themselves forward for PR and just go for it because it's really going to help with their credibility pieces. It's definitely helped me. So if people want to come and hang out with you, find out what you've got going on, where is the best place to do that? On Instagram, I'm at Nicola J. Rowley PR. And my free Facebook group is at the communications community. So come and say hello. Love to see you there. Yeah, go and check that out. We'll put it in the show notes as well. And yeah, like just go for it really. And don't hold back because you're new or because you don't think you've got a story or because you think no one cares what you have to say or you're worried that people go, who does she think she is? None of those things matter. It's about making sure that you're getting through to the person that needs to listen to you so that you can make the biggest impact that you can. Thanks for being here, Nick. And I will see you all next week for another episode. Thank you for listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson. If you'd like to get hold of my guide to launching, go to lisajohnson.com forward slash launch and let's get you making money online.